Let me ask you guys something. How deep is the wound that has been incurred upon your life? Now, I'm talking about an exacting measure that has been cut, has been made in having us where we are in this targeting experience. Is it one that has been allowed by yourself? Or is it one which has been made by your personal choice? And where does this wound reside in terms of your targeting? Because one thing I've observed for myself is if Satan can't get you onto his side. He will get you to a place that you will be in limbo. You will exist with a wound that you constantly face. Because see, Satan, he wants to look at the human being as a condition or a precondition. And Satan, all he wants you to be is a traumatized condition of your environment. He wants you to be in that place. He wants you to face the trauma and the wound as if that is what makes you. But not with God. See, but we see that God can only use somebody who he has wounded deeply and mightily for his namesake, for his glory. But the question I have is, how do you exist with the wound that has been made in your life? Have you, have you purposed to examine, to cut in even deeper, why you have been wounded in this way? See, God, He doesn't want you to be preconditioned by the fact that a wound has been made, a trauma has been made in your life. But for certain, He wants to use what He has allowed for you to see in hopes that you will turn from that, that, that it can be used as long as you allow it not to set the stage for your existence in this world. And see, I, I've gone through this where the narcissist has existed with a an unexamined wound, has been indoctrinated, has been set forth to the world to where this unexamined wound is life as the program knows it, as the agenda of your gang stalking knows it. But God has much greater plans for you if you allow Him to use that, what, you know, in terms of examining yourself through the process of that wound that you not let it keep you facing it, but that you allow God to use it in, in turning you away to Him for His glory. And a lot of the times, the unexamined life is the fact that so-called believers ultimately end up in subpar circumstances. sometimes letting the wound dictate to them who they are in this world. And sometimes going to God with it, yet at once again, time after time, falling back to that about face to the wound, and then 
trivializing that as the thing of why they're chosen or why they're at where they're at. And so essentially I want to call this message Broken Freedom. Spiritual Operation Broken Freedom. Now, an operation is something where something has to be removed. A laceration has to be made. There has to be a a deep cut to go above and beyond even one's own understanding, one's own leanings, um, one's own receipt of the infliction of the trauma so that one can more thoroughly vest him or herself into the plan that God would use that um, spiritual operation, if you will, the wound thereof, the mark of it, to turn to essentially allow God to use oneself in a way where He is glorified. And see, this is one thing I've noticed, and and. and to choose to be broken is a personal consideration. To choose it. To be made to be broke in life, financially, can be another way you can look at it. Things that come at you, things that um, put you in the circumstances that you are. The teaching that indoctrinates you to go into Life, situations, work environments, friendships, relationships, subpar because we live with that wound. But we haven't taken the responsibility thereof as individuals to examine ourselves by it so that we may overcome it, we may understand the responsibility of allowing God to use it to turn us not f- to face the existence of the wound or the conditioning of it or the conditioning from it but to the life because of it afterwards after the fact it's not that we should be facing it in terms of looking at it as if uh, as if what it had done to us that but that what it should provoke us to do because of it from it in turning away in being used by what God has allowed to, to get back to do an about face, repent and, and face Him and, and take the leap of faith to Him because of it. And I catch myself so often living by one foot in, one foot out. You know, how are you going to look at the traumatization of gang stalking? See, and what Satan, like I said, what Satan, if he can't win you to his side, He will want to keep you in limbo. He will want to say, Here, look at this wound. This is who you are. Look at this trauma. This is who you are. Although the narcissist exists by the trauma and the wound of it, not so with the believer. God wants to show you something greater. But he can only truly use somebody who's been broken by this and has not succumbed to the about face of of defining for oneself that that's who he or she will ultimately end up defining life as. Hence, we need to allow God to show us what it is to to examine. See, the examined, to to look and, and to take a personal choice to examine it is very difficult, but it is the empowering and the righteous thing to do in order to allow God into, allow God into one's life is there has to be a place where you're going to look at gang stalking Not as creating a traumatized individual, but in terms of creating a spirit-led individual who, at times, um, 
needs to be broken by this. See, because people who aren't broken are never going to come to the individual empowering personal choice that they truly need God beyond everything else that is being thrown at them, that they've been indoctrinated by, by the teachings that they can get, by the material acquisitions that they can acquire and substitute a lack of examination to mask the true trauma, the true sin issue created by the trauma, the driving force, the true uh, transgressions behind that. And so all this equates to the fact that we can at times exist to an unexamined life in which the enemy, the adversary, wants to keep us facing what it is to be traumatized without actually applying an examination of ourselves to it, of why, why it's there, why it's how we let it dictate to us how we go about existing in this life. And so I want to encourage you with this because God has more for you because of it. It doesn't define you. To Satan, yes, but Satan's a liar. God is saying, no, I'm going to show you something. This is what I'm going to show you. You are going to go through an examination, a test, a trial that, it's, that is so much more greater than what anyone else can handle in terms of having to do an examined about face of why they're allowing trauma to dictate their lives. And even so-called believers live this way where the trauma is not discovered that it, that in terms of allowing them um, understanding to why their shallow behaviors as so-called Christians are consistent in that way, in that measure. But not so with those who God chooses, those individuals who God chooses. And I myself am recognizing that for myself right now in my life is do I need others? I don't need, nobody needs anything. Yes, we want these relations. We want to be better witnesses. We want to go out. Um, but how much has the circumstance, how much has it kept us here in place? See, like Satan, if he can't get you to his side, he it's not that you'd even need people around you to keep you in a subpar place in your life. Whether, like I said, whether it be um, family relations, work, work, uh, living situation. Um, Satan's happy to keep you psychologically damaged in facing an unexamined traumatization. So, my encouragement for you is to be responsible, be the person of choice to examine. And the, the only way you're going to see what that wound is for what it, what it the illusion of what it is, the reality of, of the illusion behind it is to examine yourself to it and not let and not let the externals define what the illusion of it is as if it's truly you inwardly in which it's not but god like i said god does allow for these things to turn us away from that and so it's important to examine yourself and take personal responsibility to the trauma and not let it dictate to you as if you are some sort of precondition, you are some sort of condition, you are not. We are not uh, victims, you know. So, in terms of a spiritual operation in which, in, in which you know, we must take it upon ourselves to make a personal choice and decide. Let's examine ourselves to the gang stalking. Let's not, it's not who we are. Just, it's a part of our experience, but it's not us. We are not like them. We are not narcissists. They live by the trauma, by the wound. That's all they know. That's this world. It's a trauma based world, born into trauma. We all are, but some of us are chosen out of it, okay? And so. 
this is the most important is taking responsibility to an to exact see we're talking about a spiritual operation to exact a measure that is so forthright that will eventually and spiritually cut us off sanctify us away from what has come to pass in our lives we must make the choice though to get to the deeper meaning of it to take personal responsibility to it in order that we allow God to get the glory and you'll know you you know every day it's a struggle yes it is a, it's very much so a struggle and a lot of TIs they won't tell you this because they they haven't existed a lot of them are not real TIs now you might be a real Christian going through spiritual warfare on this level this may be a very um insightful message for you as well is you're going through the deepest of of spiritual oppression and you're you you know we are constantly in limbo with the trauma of it but remember what god has given us in personal choice in free will we must not be in limbo and and exist with the idea that we have free will without actually existing and making the choice and moving forward in applying it we cannot just stay here in limbo that's not where god wants us he wants to use it to show us something but he wants us to make the personal choice to go to him and bring it to him as well and that's one thing i catch myself doing is remaining in limbo which is subpar which at times is it doesn't mean you're backslidden but it means you're carrying yourself in a lukewarm way in which you're trying to seek relief oriented comfort and not true regeneration true revival of your spiritual need because of the physical um aspects of gang stalking that have been traumatizing you psychologically um and that's when you have to do you have to you know rededicate your life but you have to go through a thorough examination of who you are to the process of this program and this spiritual warfare at hand and god will cover you he will cover all those things to show you that he loves you and he's chosen you but it it must it first must come at the at the empowerment of personal choice and must be followed through with the obedience see god god says love is is to be obedient you know to the israelites it's obedient to the law to the believer it's obedience to the commandments of christ or to christ and you know to the process it's obedience to god but you first must take it upon yourself to throw yourself into the examination of what the trauma is and why in order that you can god can turn you away and he can use it use it to get you to turn away from it but you have to see it for yourself first so that he may you know get that holy spirit to cover all those things and remove them away and and through this process it's tough i know it's 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 very tough this process um a lot of people think it's a one time thing until they enter the examination of it and they realize um god can leave you stretched out for you to see to test you to see if you love him you know and he knows we love us cuz he he knows the ultimate root of the heart of his chosen that's the difference between us and a and someone who ultimately you know leads an unexamined life you know but we first we first must take a stake in who we are so that god can mightily use us in order that we can as we see we don't exist to just get things from god he he gives us these things in order in receipt that he gets the glory which means we we are in this relationship of constantly and consistently giving back to him ultimately to what he has initially given us is to give back to him and that's the relationship 
You know, it's not the way of the world. So, this is why, have you taken it upon yourself to go deeper into that, exacting a measure that's deeper, that is more sanctifying from the old nature, the old nature of trauma. And I want to leave you guys with that, because because if, if any inroads are going to be made, that's the starting point. So I'm going to leave you guys with that. Be blessed. First, choose it for yourself. Ask God into your life. Rededicate your life to God. Okay? And follow through with the things that God would have for you. Alright guys, till the next one. I love you guys. And if you gotten any encouragement out of this, um, 